Um, this plant has been like a hobo sponge bath for me. It's another one of my favorite plants and that small group of plants that I consider like my personal medicinal friends, the ones that I can vouch for personally, um, this one is great for anything wrong with your skin. Um, I used to have a lot of problems with poison ivy. I still have to be really careful around it. But it's known for treating poison ivy sort of like the way you rub lotion from an aloe plant um, on you. And it's got this kind of salmon pink, and I don't know if you can really see it in the camera, but it's sort of succulent. It's juicy. And then when you follow it up to these leaves, that pinkness continues, like into the middle of the leaf. Um, there's something about the shape of jewelweed that lets me know it's jewelweed. You can see these thick round petals at the bottom, and it just sort of like has these two short petals that are kind of tight. These two long petals, if you're familiar with Johnny Jump Ups or Field Pansy, it kind of reminds me of that pattern, that spray pattern. Um, and jewelweed is really great for anything wrong with your skin. Burns, sunburns, even acne. Um, when I was hitchhiking in 1998, sometimes I'd be out west and there wouldn't be, I couldn't find a creek or something to wash up in. So sometimes I'd take a bunch of jewelweed plants and Teresa, if we can get a shot of that jewelweed again. They get pretty tall. This is a, a little short one. I'm going to gather this one. I pinch it off. I try to leave the roots. The, they're often in wet soil, so if I leave the root, hopefully it'll grow back. I just pinch off the top. The whole plant can be used. Like, I'll take the tall plant. Um, I'm talking about like maybe four, three or four feet tall, and chop it up and boil it in water until I get some really nice brown orange water. And, uh, you know, that'll be like... I guess I'll fill up a big bowl and when it's about halfway down it'll be really bright orange, brownish orange. And you can freeze that into cubes and keep it all year long in your freezer. Because often when you get poison ivy it's early in the year when you can't see the leaves coming out but the sap's starting to flow and you can't find jewelweed so it's great to have in your freezer. Um, or in the autumn is when I'd get it a lot when the leaves have fallen and I'm hitting the, the vine, the hairy vine. So another time to have jewelweed frozen in your freezer. I just put it on, you know, ice cube. Um, you can melt it back down and heat it up. But one of the cool ways to tell jewelweed, other than what I just said about the pink color and the succulent stem, is the reason why they call it jewelweed. Shot salmon water. <laughs> salmon water. So I always like to bring another leaf. I'm not even sure what this leaf is, just for contrast. So you can see what another leaf looks like underwater. This is the top of this leaf. The bottom of that leaf. Right, jewelweed is called jewelweed because when you take a jewelweed leaf and you put it underwater, here's the top of a jewelweed leaf. I don't know how much you can pick up. And here's the bottom. So the bottom looks like mercury or sterling silver. It shows up really well in person. And water beads up on it. Like when I take it out, it looks like water doesn't really want to sit on it. It just kind of sheds it. So it's got a really unique thing it does underwater. Are you getting that, Teresa? Yeah, it looks really silver when you put it underwater. Nice. So yeah, anything wrong with your skin, especially poison ivy, I've heard it can be used preventatively. So, like I was about to say, when I was a, a hobo and hitchhiking, I'd get a handful of this stuff, and I would just mash it up. Mash the whole thing up. Like I chew some other plants, as you've seen, for a poultice. This you can just mash up, like kind of like an aloe plant, and just apply it everywhere. And it's so good for your skin, it feels cleansing. So when I couldn't wash up, it would just be a way to like, instead of this one plant, I'd have a whole handful and just wash up. And it was it's this lotion feeling. If you can see the moisture on my hand, I don't know if that picks up in the camera. Mm. But it's really slimy. It's just like skin lotion you'd buy from a store. I've heard if you use too much of it, of course, you can see the little plant part. So of course you gotta, you know, if you're gonna be going in the grocery store, you might have little pieces of plant on you which I don't really care, but you might. Mm -hmm. And 
I heard if you use too much of it too long, it can turn your skin orange. I've had that happen a little bit, like a little orange tint, but not much. So this is one of my closest friends in the plant kingdom, Julie. Do you have anything you want to add, Teresa? Um, what about its edibility? Oh yeah, at this stage when it's under six inches, six inches is about the length of my hand. So this would definitely qualify. Here's one. So obviously much shorter than my hand. This is when they're edible. Um, the medicinal part, whatever that chemical is in it that makes jewelweed work for your skin, gets too strong after that. But if I pick these and gather them, I can boil them in water, pour out the water, boil them again, pour it out, and then cook that in some butter. They're really good. I generally don't eat these because, you know, it takes effort. You gotta boil it, pour out the water. Um, there's so many other things to eat that I usually don't get around to that. But when I used to teach classes and I'd want to show people what that tasted like, I would go through that trouble just to show them it could be done. And it is a really good flavor. So that's about all I have on jewelweed. Teresa, anything else? Thank you, jewelweed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, jewelweed.